Hey there everyone. Uh, today I wanted to record just a quick video to answer some of the questions that I've been getting over email and on YouTube uh, asking me about the lighting and the equipment that I use. Uh, I've been getting a lot of nice comments about the quality of the videos that I'm producing on YouTube and a lot of folks want to know you know what am I using to create the videos. So I'm going to try to answer that question. Now let me say that uh, a lot of this equipment that I'm talking about I've covered in a book that I've written called Macro Watch Photography for Beginners. And I'll, sh I'll throw up uh, an annotation of, of uh, uh, some information about that as well as some links in the description of this video. Uh, but in that book I talk about the equipment that you need uh, to do if you're just a beginner to get into macro watch photography or you know macro product photography any kind of small object uh, like a knife or, or even a gun or a watch uh, a lot of the techniques and the equipment that you're going to use are going to be the same so uh, I highly encourage you to check out that book because the as it turns out the equipment that I use for doing this kind of photography which I've done for years for uh, magazines as a freelance uh, writer and photographer uh, for watch magazines as well as for my own websites. All that equipment translates really well to doing video. So we'll, we'll talk a little bit about that today. Let me also say up front that, again as I talk about in the video, you don't have to spend a lot of money. <clears throat> Some of the stuff here that I've got is real expensive high-end equipment. Uh, there's a lot of guys out there. Uh, give a little shout out to guys like uh, Cutlery Lover and Nut and Fancy, the Nut and Fancy project that are doing gear reviews, uh, they're not using high-end cameras. As a matter of fact, uh, I don't think their videos are even produced in HD. So it's not necessary. The, and those guys, you know, have, certainly have a lot more uh, subscribers than I do. Uh, they've been in the business uh, a lot longer than I have in terms of YouTube videos. But uh, you don't need a lot of high-end equipment if you just want to do some simple videos. Uh, I have a lot of professional grade equipment that I use for my professional photography. Again, it translates well to the video world. Some of the equipment that I'm using here is very inexpensive and stuff that I've just thrown together uh, quite honestly because the products that are out there in the marketplace don't really meet my needs and I've, I've kind of had to cobble together my own stuff that does uh, meet my needs. So let's, let's show you a little bit about what we've got here. Uh, in terms of the low end stuff here, this, this light box uh, is designed to diffuse light onto the stage area here so that you're not getting real direct harsh light uh, onto what you're trying to photograph or, or video. And uh, this is just a plastic storage bin, the kind that you can pick up at any hardware store or, or a home improvement store like Home Depot or Lowe's. Uh, you know, I think it was uh, you know maybe ten bucks or so, and I've got it sitting on its side uh, so that the open part is in front, and then around the perimeter, I've got a bunch of uh, cheap little desk clamps or clamp lamps uh, clamped onto the edges and onto each other. Uh, those little lamps you can pick up for you know probably ten bucks a piece or so. The bulbs that are in them are the key. Uh, that's really what you want to pay attention to. You want to get uh, daylight temperature fluorescent bulbs. And the, the bulbs I've got here are of the, I think, 50, 50 or 55 watt variety. Uh, they're going to be a little pricey. You, you know, they're going to be upwards 15, 20 bucks a piece. So, you know, the, the, the bulbs really are the key, though, in terms of delivering the correct temperature. And that, that, will, that will make... Uh, that will make it much easier to control the color of the images or the video that you produce so that you're not getting uh, ugly yellow colors uh, that you can get from other kinds of bulbs. You want to use daylight temperature bulbs. So that's a real key there. Uh, and again, also making sure you've got some form of a, of a, a material to diffuse that light uh, so that you're not getting direct harsh light that creates glares and hot spots on what you're trying to photograph or video. Now in terms of equipment here, you know, again, I do a lot of professional photography and, and a lot of DSLRs that are made today do HD video. Uh, I've got the uh, Canon 5D Mark II here. 
that is typically what I use when I travel or when I do outdoor photography. It's a full frame camera, good for landscape work. Uh, it will do video. I've used I've used it for video in, in some cases, but more often when I'm in the studio, when I'm doing watch photography or when I'm recording videos, I'm using my 7D here. Uh, the 7D is a little newer than the 5D Mark II and uh, has a couple of features now. It is a, it's, it's a crop factor camera. It's not a full frame camera, but uh, one of the newer design features that it has is it's, it makes it real easy to do video because it's just got this little switch here that you click from normal camera mode over to the red video camera. Uh, so it makes it real easy uh, to just switch over. In the, in the 5D Mark II, you got to go into the menus and, and kind of fool around a little bit. So uh, and again, because it's usually on my tripod because I'm doing photo work here, I, I've just you've been using it mostly for video, and it, and it works out really well. Attached to it, I've got uh, uh, the Canon 17 to 40. That's an L series lens, great, great lens, uh, and it can it has some macro capabilities uh, as well. Uh, so it's it's good for doing close up work. Uh, on on this camera, I've got. Uh, the the uh, another L series lens here, the 24 to 105. Another just fantastic, great walk around lens uh, on a uh, on a full frame camera. Even though this is a 24 and this is a 17, this is uh, a wider lens. But on this on this 5D Mark II, uh, it seems like uh, you get about the same area of coverage they seem about equal width again because this is a full frame camera and, and this is a crop factor so uh, uh, if I do video work with this in, in many cases I'll use this 24 to 105 because it it produces a, a similar frame uh, to uh, to the 1740 now here on the stage here you'll see I've got a, a, a Phoenix uh, uh, PD20 that uh, uh, this Phoenix PD20 flashlight that I'm going to be doing a video on here real soon, probably after I do this video. Uh, so it's it's kind of getting prepped and ready to, to record. But I've got some other accessories and equipment here. Uh, a lot of times I'm handling watches or other things that you don't want to get fingerprints on, like knife handles, knife blades, and cloth gloves really help in that regard. They're thin, so you don't lose a lot of... Uh, touch or finger dexterity when you wear them but they do keep fingerprints off of what you're what you're trying to uh, handle so they're really handy I've got a ton of these uh, Rolex gloves so I tend to tend to use these a lot and then the other consideration is when you're doing close-up work macro work uh, you get a lot of dust and hair that you don't really see until you get up on it with the camera yeah, so I always want to make sure that before I do any filming or any photographing so I just use a little something like this to, to blow off the air. Um, you know, if you don't have a kind of a little fancier device like that, good old can of uh, compressed air works works too. And then, uh, you know, some other equipment that we've got here, that the, the 7D here that I record with is mounted to a really nice tripod. Uh, this is a this is a Manfrotto uh, tripod. I talk about this. I've got an I actually got an article on through my lens where I go through some of this equipment. and I give the model model numbers and stuff, and I'll also link to that in the description of the video, so you get some more detail here. But if you're going to do photography, video work, uh, invest in a good tripod. Uh, in many ways, it's one of the most important pieces of equipment that that you can use. I've got a nice Manfrotto. Uh, ball head here uh, mounted to the tripod. Uh, this is this is high quality gear. It's going to be pretty expensive, but uh, again, a good tripod, there's just no substitute. Um, really like that. I've, I've, got a, I've got a few tripods, but I, I really like this one the best. And then on top of the 7D here, I've got one of the newest pieces of equipment. I've only used this in a couple of videos, but I'm really, really digging it. I, I like this a lot. This is the Rode uh, Video Mic, and I'm actually probably going to do a review on this uh, later on after I've had some more experience with it. Again, I've just recorded a couple of videos using it, but I think it really improves the audio quality of what I'm recording. 
uh, as an accessory microphone, it just plugs into uh, uh, the auxiliary port here on my camera. There's a mic port uh, on the 7D, and uh, it mounts to the, the flash hot shoe here. And I've actually got it mounted in reverse because I want the microphone toward me when I'm recording to record my voice. But of course, if you're filming someone else, you would you would reverse it. But again, I think this video mic has really improved the quality of the audio for my videos. I'm really impressed with it. It's it's a pricey piece of equipment. Uh, retails for about $350, but you can find it for less than that online. Uh, really impressed with that. Look for look for a product review on that coming up real soon. So that's you know that's it. I've got some other stuff in here. Here's a uh, a stand that I that I use a lot when I'm photographing watches. Uh, uh, you know I've got some other accessory equipment in here that I use when uh, when I'm filming. You always need some good uh, some good microfiber cloths here like this one. Wipe things down before you film them. But that's that's pretty much the basics of, of what I use and, and kind of the equipment and, and particularly the lighting, uh, which is a, just a huge key to, to making sure you get a good video. Thanks for watching the video. You're probably hearing a little bit. Uh, I've got a gallery behind me. My uh, my audience here. These these are our uh, our pooches, our canines. Uh, we've got a Rottweiler named Caesar, and and uh, uh, those are the two labs, the twins. Uh, Hans is the the darker of the two on the right, and Lady is uh, is the female, and uh, they're all just knocked out because they've had their breakfast and and uh, they're taking their their after breakfast nap, letting their food digest. So uh, probably heard them making some grunting noises. So, uh, but again, there we go. That's uh, that's my equipment. That's what I use to create my videos and uh, my photographs. And uh, again, a lot of this information is covered in my book, Macro Watch Photography for Beginners. Highly recommend that. Uh, I'll go ahead and announce here for the first time, you're hearing it first, I'm going to do a video supplement to my Macro Watch Photography book that shows all the details, goes through all the lessons and the tutorials in video form. And I think that's going to appeal to a lot of people. It's going to be a separate product uh, that will complement the uh, the ebook. You can buy one or the other, or you can buy them together. Uh, so look for a pre-order on my new video coming real soon. Thanks for watching. Take care, and I hope you enjoyed the video.